sticky, glossy coating on some super crispy chicken and sprinkling of sesame seeds. This is my ultimate sesame chicken. Sesame chicken, one of those Chinese restaurant classics. I've got a version that's a little tweaked, a little bit lighter without the batter that is much easier to make at home. So before we do anything, let's talk about the chicken. I'm using chicken breast. You could easily use thigh as well. And I want them in very small, thin pieces. The first thing we wanna do is get lots of flavor onto our chicken. So we're gonna do a little marinade. I'm gonna start off with some garlic. And finally grating this garlic is actually gonna make the garlic a stronger flavor rather than just chopping it. Some soy sauce, some sesame oil, and the next ingredient is egg white. So just the egg white, because I wanna keep this really nice and light, but I do want that extra bit of liquid in this marinade because that's gonna help us when we come to do the coating in the flour. You'll see a little bit later on. And then I just want a little pinch of salt as well. Now just mix all of that through, making sure that egg white is evenly mixed. And then I'm just gonna set that aside while I make my sauce. So I need some chicken stock first of all, and some soy sauce and some vinegar and some sugar. I love how simple the ingredients are for this one. Okay, so now we come to the part where we're gonna do our coating for the chicken. And this is gonna be in lieu of, you know, that kind of thick stodgy batter that you usually get. Instead of doing that, we're just gonna pour a whole lot of chicken here, plus the marinade as well. So the liquid is important and then just toss all of this through with the flour and that extra liquid and the flour are gonna create all these little nooks and crannies all over the chicken pieces and they're gonna crisp up and get nice and crunchy in our oil. So if you have a look here, you can see there's lots of little bits and pieces sticking to our chicken, exactly what we want. Okay, so now we're ready to deep fry and I'm just gonna use a wooden chopstick to see if my oil is hot enough. Yep, I can see lots of little bubbles, so that tells me that this oil is ready to go. Now the key here is not to overcrowd your pan. Just carefully place in those pieces of chicken, and you'll probably need to do this in about two or three batches, depending on how large your pan is. Now just move the pieces around a little bit, make sure they're not sticking together or sticking to the bottom of the pan. I find giant novelty chopsticks very good for this kind of purpose, but um, you know, you can just use tongs as fine as well. <laughs> now once these guys are looking really nice and golden, take them out and drain them in some paper towel. And then just keep going until you've done all of your chicken. So now we're at the part where everything gets all sticky and gooey and awesome. Uh, we're gonna start off in the wok or any frying pan is fine. And now when that pan's really nice and hot, I'm gonna pour in our sauce. And I just wanna let this simmer and bubble away for a few minutes just to thicken it a little and let that sugar dissolve. Now you can see this has come to like a rolling boil and also I can kind of smell that vinegar starting to burn off a little bit now. Oh. And when I've got foggy glasses, that's when you know it's ready. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna add in my corn flour that I've mixed with a little bit of water. Ooh, check out that glass. My goodness, ah, so exciting. And I'm gonna add in my chicken. And hear how crispy that is? Ah, and now you wanna toss everything together until that chicken is beautifully coated, glossy and shiny. And then finally, I want a really good sprinkling of my sesame seeds on here. Ah, oh, that is not one happy looking little dish. I don't know what is. Look at that. Okay, now just serve it up. And just one final little flourish of sesame seeds for my liking. And now it would be totally criminal for me not to try this and torture you guys with how good it is. Mmm. That sauce is so like sweet and tangy and that beautiful chicken. Mm. And it's so light, so much lighter than the takeaway version. Mm. I mean, I could just eat this all day. It's that mic drop moment when that sticky, sweet and sour sauce hits that tender pork. Ah, oh, you guys are gonna love this ultimate sweet and sour pork. Okay, so first off, let's talk about the pork belly. I'm using pork belly because it's one of my favorite pork cuts. I love how 
tender and juicy it is. And yes, it's gonna be a really quick cook. So I think a lot of the time when we think of pork belly, we think it has to be slow braised, but I'm gonna show you a way that keeps the pork really, really tender. So first off, I'm gonna cut my pork into just some more manageable strips because I wanna take the skin off. This is not a skin on recipe. Yes, I love crispy pork skin as much as the next person, but uh, the skin will toughen up in this quick cook scenario. So we need to take it off. Once you've got that strip of pork, you can just slide your knife in between the skin and the first layer of fat. Make yourself a little handle. Just hold your knife steady and then wiggle that pork skin right off. Now we want that pork into nice bite-sized pieces. And now we're gonna start layering up this flavor straight away. So I'm gonna get some soy sauce onto my pork because I'm gonna make a nice little marinade and I just want some garlic as well. And a nice little sprinkling of black ground pepper. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that aside to marinate while I get my sauce ready. And we are gonna make a homemade sweet and sour sauce that is gonna beat any takeaway version hands down. So first off, I just want some brown sugar. And I love how simple and easy the sauce is to make. It's so quick. All right, and a little bit of white vinegar. And I want some soy sauce. And I'm using some pineapple juice. You could also use apple juice. It's just to sort of add a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of tartness as well. Now here's where the purists are gonna get a little bit cranky, but I'm gonna add some tomato ketchup. Now tomato naturally has a lot of umami. That's gonna give us great flavor. It's also gonna give us a little bit of color to our sauce as well. So it's not the purest version of sweet and sour if there is such a thing, it's the ultimate version. So my ultimate version. So there you go. Don't hate it till you try it. And some Chinese five spice. So I'm using my homemade version. You can find the video for that on my YouTube channel, but store-bought's fine as well. And I just want to simmer this about five minutes until that sugar has dissolved completely and the sauce has thickened ever so slightly. Okay, that's looking good. And just to thicken everything up and make it really nice and super glossy, I am going to add some cornstarch that I've just mixed with a little bit of water. Just cook this for a few more minutes until we get the right thickness. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. This is what we want, that beautiful, luscious, shiny, thick sauce. Now, vegetables, I'm sticking to the classics here. So I just want one onion and I want to keep my onion and capsicum and pineapple quite chunky. I don't want anything to sort of break up and become indistinguishable in the final stir fry. It's all about the detail when it comes to these types of dishes. And some capsicum. And then finally the pineapple. It's gotta be fresh pineapple. Tinned pineapple, it gets mushy. It doesn't have, it's too sweet. doesn't have the right flavor for me. So please, please use fresh pineapple or just leave it out. Okay, now back to the pork. Now this pork has the luxury of being cooked twice for this dish. So I'm gonna add in a little bit of flour. Just toss that around. Now when that oil's nice and hot, just wanna drop in those magical little pieces of pork belly listen to the sound of that lovely deep frying. Now give you guys some space in here. I want them to cook evenly in that lovely oil. So I'm going to do this in two batches. And that flour coating instead of a thick stodgy batter is going to give us a much lighter, fresher dish. Now each piece is a lovely deep golden color and you can see that it's nice and crispy on the outside. You wanna take them out and drain them on some paper towel and resist the urge to eat the entire plate full before the cooking is done. Now let me show you why method of cooking is so genius for a sweet and sour because when I cut this open, Ah, you'll see that pork perfectly cooked. And then look at that whisper of a crispy flour coating on the outside. And that, my friends, is what's gonna soak up all of that beautiful sauce. Okay, so now we get everything together in our stir fry. I want a little bit of oil into my hot wok. Get that onion sizzling. Now capsicum. And I just like to give those guys a few minutes just to get a little bit soft. I still want a crunchy vegetable, my capsicum and onion. So I'm not gonna cook this for too long, but just enough so that they're tender. Now for that delightful pork and my little pineapple pieces. And now for that lovely sweet and sour sauce. And a final touch of some chopped spring onion. The color, the gloss, the flavor, ah, oh, perfection. I'm just gonna get right in there and try a piece. Perfect balance of sweet, sour, tart, mm, and that pork, so good. 
how do you make the perfect noodles for stir frying? How do you keep your beef super soft and juicy and tender? Well, I have all the answers and a few little tricks up my sleeve. These are my beef chow mein noodles. So there are a few little tricks that I have up my sleeve that will make your beef chow mein the ultimate, most perfect noodle stir fry dish ever. Um, first of all, we wanna deal with our beef. Now, how do we keep the beef really super tender and juicy? One of my pet hates is beef stir fry where the beef is like all hard and gross and you know what I mean. It's not good. Um, this one is good and I'm gonna show you how. First of all, uh, you wanna get your beef slices really nice and thin. Now, for me, you know, this kind of size is really good. I like uh, a beef cut that has a little bit of fat through it, uh, but you could use a leaner cut as well. This happens to be a scotch fillet. Uh, now, I wanna get that into my bowl here. And now flavor first. Uh, I'm gonna start with a bit of soy sauce and then a dash of Chinese cooking wine. Now, I know a lot of you like to keep your dishes alcohol free, so you could just add like a dash of apple juice or orange juice here just to give you a little bit more of like a fruity flavor that you kind of get from the wine. And then now we're all about our little pantry tricks for keeping our beef really soft and tender. So first up, baking soda. So without getting too food nerdy on you guys, um, the baking soda raises the pH level on the surface of the meat and actually makes um, it harder for the meat tendons on the inside to kind of um, stretch out or get dry. So they, they kind of keep really nice and you know tight and juicy and soft. So anyway, that's the deal there. Uh, and then secondly, I wanna add some corn flour. So the corn flour is gonna give us like, um, kind of like a protective coating on the outside of each strip of beef. Uh, and that is going to make things cook faster on the outside and keep everything juicy on the inside. So there you go, a couple of little tricks. Now, I just wanna mix that together really well. And you don't need much time here. Like literally, I'm just gonna leave this while I get everything else ready for the stir fry. A few minutes is all you need. This next part, guys, absolutely crucial. We are gonna chit chat now about noodles. So one of the things that you guys are always telling me is that you have a big problem with your noodles. They get all soggy in the pan, they're all soft and sticky and gluggy and, Let's solve that problem right now. Okay, so what you wanna do, first of all, is start off with some fresh Chinese egg noodles for this one. I find they're the best ones uh, for this particular chow mein stir fry. Uh, they look like this, and they're usually in the fridge section of supermarkets or your Asian grocer. If not, if you're using other noodles, that's okay, but the same principles will still apply that we're about to go through. Um, anyway, take your noodles, and you want some boiling water. And what we're gonna do here is, I'm not even gonna call this cooking noodles. We're not cooking the noodles. We are just blanching them. We're just giving them a little bit of a head start. I don't even want them cooked through. I want them to be hard and firm, still even after they come out of the water. That's the key, because if they're overcooked now, they will get soggy and gluggy in the pan when we stir fry them. And even if you're not using these particular noodles, the same thing applies. Undercook them, al dente, that's what you want. Less than al dente, okay. So enough chit chat, <laughs> it's literally, I know, it sounds like I'm like giving you the like the do this, do that, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, I'm just obsessed with getting the noodles just right. Okay, <laughs> put, put the noodles into your boiling water. Stir them around and real time guys, that's actually it. So get them off the heat and then you wanna drain them and get them straight under some running water. Get in there with your hands, pick them up, lift them up, get them really chilled down and cold. I don't want any kind of heat here. I wanna stop that cooking. And now this is what you should have. Beautiful, very firm noodles. You know, they're almost sort of like bouncing. That's how firm they are when they hit the bowl. And now we're ready to start stir frying and a couple more little bits of technique here are really gonna help you out with keeping that beef really tender. So first of all, you wanna get your wok or your frying pan really hot uh, and add in some oil and then grab your beef, get that into that hot oil and straight away you wanna be spreading that beef out in the pan so that you're getting as much high, hot heat coming into contact with as much of the beef pieces as possible. If you've got everything clumped up, that's when you're gonna get like stewing and everything steaming and you're not gonna get the beautiful brown searing that you want. Now what you want here is to see some nice color on the bottom of the beef. So let's have a look. Okay, that's looking really good. Now is the time to start flipping and stir frying. 
So now that we've got that really lovely deep dark colour on our beef strips, we want to go in with our garlic and some ginger and just toss that through. Oh, that smell already is so amazing. Whenever garlic and ginger hits a hot pan, oh, I just get excited. <laughs> okay, now we want to add in some cabbage. So I'm going with some red cabbage here because I love that pop of colour, but any you know white cabbage or napa cabbage is fine as well. Now, as soon as that cabbage is looking a little more tender, still crunchy, but you know, nice and tender, now I want to go in with my noodles. Now add the oyster sauce, some soy sauce, and then I like to always add a little bit of dark soy sauce just to give you a nice, like, lovely colour. And now toss everything through until each noodle strand is beautifully coated. Okay, so you can see just how lovely and luscious and separate all those beautiful noodles are. All right, time to add in my spring onion. Just toss that through. And then here's my little tip for whenever you're using sesame oil in a dish, leave it till the very end. If you add it at the beginning, it often loses its big like intensity. So that goes in. So there you go guys, my very easy but technically perfect, I'm sorry about the noodle lecture everyone, um, technically perfect uh, easy beef chow mein noodles. Alright, let's get in here and make sure that this tastes as good as it looks and smells. Oh, that beef, those noodles. Mmm. Mm, wow. You know what's amazing about that? That beef is so melt in your mouth tender. Mm. And those noodles, so chewy and delicious. Ah, oh, there is so much going on there. Mm. Love it. Mm. Yum. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one. And that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks, guys.